Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're going to see how we can use attention to improve the performance of a CNN. So if you're new to this channel, all the code you see is available in my GitHub repo, link in the description. And this video is a part of a larger PyTorch deep learning series. So have a go and check those videos out if you haven't already. So we are on section 13, started looking at the attention mechanism, what it is, how it works, how we can use it in that previous video. What is the attention mechanism? In the previous video, we looked at how we can add attention to an LSTM to improve its performance there. Now, we didn't really talk about it in that video, but the type of attention we were using is called cross attention, where we have one element in our sequence query or attend to all of the other elements in the sequence, right? But those other elements in the sequence don't attend to it, or there's a sort of one directional attention. In this notebook, we're gonna look at something called self attention. And the main difference here is that every element in our input sequence is going to be able to query every other element in the sequence. So the sort of input to our attention mechanism is the entire input and the entire input is going to be able to query the entire input. So we're going to add this to a convolutional neural network to try and improve the performance. First question is why? Why are we going to add this to a convolutional neural network? So we've already seen convolutional neural networks and we've seen how to construct them, what they are and how to train them. You can go back to the previous videos on, I think we first started talking about it in uh, what is it, convolutions and also building your first CNN. And most of this code in this notebook actually comes from building your first ResNet. The main difference is we're just going to add the self-attention mechanism. But if you remember in that when we covered convolutions or you remember your convolutions, we have some input 2D feature map. I'm gonna draw a very basic one. And we have some convolutional kernel. So we're gonna assume a single channel input, single channel kernel. And we use this kernel to convolve the input. You know, we put it a different color over the input image window, parameters there, and we multiply and sum them up. And then we stride this kernel know one or however many steps uh, over and then we do it again and on the output we'll get something in this case if it was stride one we would get just a little two by two output now one feature of this output is that for each of these features in this feature map they only correspond to a part of the input so this top left one here only corresponds to this two by two block here this one corresponds to this two by two block here, so on and so forth. So we say the receptive field of these features only corresponds to a small part of the input, or another way of saying that convolutions act locally in the spatial dimension on the input, right? And so in order to build up a proper representation with our convolutional neural networks, we stack multiple layers with our activation functions so that at the end of the convolutional layers, we hope that that feature map or the features in that feature map have a receptive field of the entire input, right? Either through multiple convolutions or convolutions and downsampling, we'll hopefully get that occurring. One potential downside of that is that this method means that those earlier layers in our convolutional neural network only ever see a very small patch of the input. All right, and they are only extracting low level, simple features it doesn't mean they can't adapt to global features. There's no way for it to sort of change how it's extracting or sort of what type of features or exactly how it's extracting based on information located in other areas of the image. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use attention we're gonna put early on in our network so that the outputs of our convolutional layer once passed into the attention can attend to or query all of the other spatial locations in the feature map. So this diagram that I've made basically shows how we're gonna do this. So this block here is going to be the output feature map potentially from a convolution. It's gonna be after the first conv layer in our network as we'll see. And we basically pass this to value key and query layers. So we're gonna use PyTorch's multi-headed attention here. And that again has that linear layer that will project our input into the actual uh, value keys and queries. And what we're gonna do is basically sort of unfold this 2D feature map into a 1D sequence and we need to transpose it to get it in the right shape. So what I mean by that is we have, again, assume we have our three by three input. What we're gonna do is we're gonna treat each spatial location, so this is our width and this is our height, as an element in our sequence 
and we're going to do like a sequential processing with attention. So this sort of gets unfolded into, I'm not going to draw it out, but it's going to be a byte by width. So there's going to be nine of those. I won't draw them all out, but there'll be nine of those. And again, with our convolutions, we have multiple channels. So we can also imagine that there are multiple channels here. And each of these is going to have the same number of channels. Right, so we're just sort of unraveling this 2D thing into a or 1D with, with channels. So unraveling the 3D into 2D. So this is going to be byte by width, but it's channels by byte times width. Right, that's going to be the shape. And we need to transpose this because our multi-headed attention block takes in a tensor that is batch size by sequence length by the size of the embedding. So it'll be batch size by sequence length by the size of the embedding. Let's just call that N. In our case, we have H times W elements in our sequence, right? So it's each spatial location and each spatial location is going to be a size channel. So we need to transpose this so that it's batch size by H, W. And so then this, once we've done this transformation can then be put directly into our normal PyTorch multi-headed attention block and we can use it from there. So this sort of transposing is what's going on here uh, and then that gets passed into our attention. So this is just normal attention and at the end we sort of do the opposite. We transpose again, reshape so that it's the same shape as the input and what we're going to do is we're going to put a residual connection here so we're just going to sum this to our input. So let's have a look at our network now. Like I said, all the rest of this code is exactly the same as the ConvResNet one. The only difference is I've changed the network type here. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple CNN. We have our first conv layer here. We don't do any downsampling. 64 channels out, three by three kernel, one stride, one padding, so no downsample. Skip the attention for now. You can see we've just got an additional three more conv layers that do a two by two stride. So they will downsample uh, by a factor of two. So three by three kernel, two by two stride and a one by one padding. And we got our batch norm and our dropout and our final linear layer. So we're gonna do classification with the Cypher 10 data set. Where are we? The Cypher 10 data set. So we've seen this before. Okay, so let's look at how we're using attention here. We've created our multi-headed attention block. You can see here the embedding size is the size of the channels as we've shown you. Uh, once we do that reshaping, the size of each element in our sequence is gonna be the size of the channel, so 64. We can have more heads than just one, but I've just I've kept it one for simplicity and also to reduce the compute and also batch first again. I'm also using just a layer norm. This is just a straight normalization of each of the vectors in the sequence, just so that they are all similar magnitudes before we put them into tension. Uh, we've also got a single learnable scale parameter that I'm going to initialize to zero. If we look at our forward pass, you can see that I'm actually multiplying the output of our attention by this parameter before doing the residual skip add. This is just to help the network so that at the start of training, this parameter will be zero. So we're getting no contribution from the attention. The attention mechanism or the attention tends to be a bit slow to learn, especially compared to our convolutional and our fully connected layers, which are much quicker. And so it can introduce a bit of noise at the start of training. And it's very common to add this parameter when you want to implement self-attention with a CNN. Uh, I haven't had too many good explanations as to why it is included. My theory is that it is noisy at the start of training and so the rest of the network tries to ignore it and never brings it back in later on. So if you zero it at the start and let it bring it, bring it into the network itself, it might, might help its training, but it does seem to make a difference. But in any case here, you can see we're actually calling a function called use attention. I've just done this to make it a bit neater in the forward pass. And this method of our class takes in the input and actually does that reshaping first. So we go from batch size channel height width to batch size channel height by width. And we transpose the last two dimensions, the channels and height width as we saw. And then we do the normalization, right? So this is our sequence batch size by height width by channel. So this is our sequence length here. And we normalize each of those vectors in our sequence independently that's what the layer norm will do and then with our self-attention the query keys and values are all exactly the same and the multi-headed attention block has linear layers in it to project to the keys queries and values 
that it's going to then use to actually do tension. Once we've got the output, we're going to, like I said, do the opposite, transpose, reshape, and that will be our output that we then use to add connection. I'm also getting it to return the attention map, that actual attention map. Yeah, and we're going to use that for visualization purposes. We can actually see what areas of an image are querying what other areas of the image. So this uh, is actually a attention map per spatial location. So we only need to take one of those rows, reshape it to the image size for visualization. I've already trained this network. The addition of the attention mechanism actually does considerably increase the compute required for this. And one reason is that the length of our sequence is actually very, very long. Right, so for a 32 by 32 sized image, we've got with our uh, Cypher 10 images here, the size of this attention map here is going to be 32 by 32, but 32 times 32 by 32 times 32. So 1024 by 1024. And there's gonna be one of those per element in our batch. And then we're doing the multiplication with our values. So the matrices we're multiplying here are actually very large even for a very small image. So you can imagine if you want to, you know, try to use this for a larger image, compute resources goes up by a factor of four. So you do see this integrated into convolutional neural networks. It's very commonly used for diffusion models. So diffusion units uh, very commonly have self-attention. The higher resolution feature maps within that unit, they use something called like a global attention or what I would call a channel wise attention where each sequence or each element in the sequence isn't the spatial location, it's actually the channel. So the uh, entire channel is the embedding. And so because you have less channels, for example, we've only got 64 channels here, that's only 64 sequ uh, elements in the sequence, not 64 by 64, just 64. So a considerably less um, elements in our sequence, uses less compute, but it doesn't have as good um, a mechanism for combining information spatially. Okay, so like I said, I have trained this already. There isn't much else to say with the training code. Uh, you can see we get accuracy about 28.66%. I have trained this as well, I made a copy of the code and I've just commented out the use of the attention there. That's all I've done. I haven't even removed it from the actual model definition. We've just skipped it in the forward pass and trained again. And we do get a slightly worse performance. So the attention does seem to be helping a little bit in this case. The last thing I wanted to show is the uh, attention map that I talked about. So like I said, we can do our forward pass the first conv layer and just use that use attention method in our class to get the attention map. Again, this is the attention map. Every row is the attention map for one spatial location. So we can index one of those locations. That's what we're doing here. And we're going to reshape that uh, and plot it out with the original image. I'm going to play around with this. This is the X and Y dimensions of the image or the feature map that we're going to extract the attention map for. And that's just a little X on our original image. And you can see that softmax activation in our attention map. So you can kind of see the brighter areas are where this spatial location has queried the other spatial location. Play around with that and we can see how it changes so it, the idea is that it's sort of working out what this location in the image or the feature map is by quickly querying every other part of the image so it can sort of adapt what it's doing in this location based on the global information and as you can see we can improve performance a little bit by doing so, so that's all i wanted to cover in this video like i said if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do that check out some of the other videos and stay tuned for the next ones where we're going to start to look now at how we can use attention on its own without convolutional layers, without LSTMs and bring in the error of the transformer model. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next